Last week, I went over PETA's vegan guide to Animal Crossing, where PETA just bashed on the game for the entire article, and then they proceeded to argue with everyone about it over on Twitter. And today, I figured it would be fun to find as many of these articles as possible. And I found a lot of articles by PETA making fun of a variety of video games. There's also a few articles of PETA praising games. So we'll see what PETA actually values in a game. And then there's some articles that are in like a gray area where I really can't tell how PETA feels. There's also a couple Adult Swim games that PETA recommends, and these games act just like PETA games. I say we dive into the articles first. So PETA is mad at Call of Duty, and apparently it sparked student protest as well. Let's be real, they're probably mad because other players are too sweaty and they want to roast Call of Duty real quick, so they made this article. Okay, so they're actually mad because in the game you're forced to shoot attack dogs. Okay, so this game takes place in the setting of World War II, and there were attack dogs who fought in that war. And Call of Duty takes a lot of inspiration for the time periods that they're set in. So if anything, Peter should be upset at World War II for, I mean, for probably a couple reasons they should be upset at the war. But they only seem to care about animals, so they should be upset at World War II for sending in attack dogs, as opposed to being upset at Call of Duty for trying to be historically accurate here. They're also mad that you can unlock a reward that unleashes a pack of dogs on enemies. Okay, Peter, yeah, put the word reward in quotation marks, like you have any legs to stand on here. Your reward in games is literally videos of animal abuse that are typically stuck in the middle of games that kids play. The article then talks about the students who protest tested it. And what they're saying here is actually so stupid. They talk about how killing dogs in games isn't a form of entertainment, and it may make some people do it in real life. So first of all, the argument that video games cause violence is stupid. And second of all, in Call of Duty, you kill a lot, a lot of people. But the only thing they have a problem with is killing dogs. So if people play Call of Duty and get influenced to kill people in real life, that's fine. But if they get inspired to kill dogs in real life, uh-uh, that's terrible. Less than a month ago, Peter released an article and a video about the top things to do in Elden Ring. This is one where I just don't know Peter's intentions here. So let's just quickly go through the list. Number one, take your dogs for a walk. Number two, parry enemies to knock them off horses so they don't exploit them. Number three, observe wildlife from a safe distance. Number four, check out an animal sanctuary. Number five, spend a peaceful moment with the animals. Number six, buy a beast repellent torch to let animals know that you mean no harm. The video and article then ends with this giant lobster killing the player with the text, the animals and the lands between deserve your respect. What the hell are you talking about? I'm not gonna respect anything that tries to pinch me to death. Okay, so the way that they present everything here is kind of silly, but at the end of the day, they're not really saying anything bad about Elden Ring, so I really can't complain here. Which is really weird, it seems like PETA just kind of cherry picks which games to hate on and which games to love. Animal Crossing, where you move into a town full of animals and they can become your best friends. Boo. Elden Ring, a game where you can brutally murder many animals. Yay. So in this article, they're basically just saying, hey, the animals in Elden Ring are pretty cool. You should appreciate them. And this is the most recent article by PETA that's gonna be in this video. So maybe they're done trashing on video games? It's hard to tell right now. Give them a little bit more time and then we'll see what happens. It's also worth mentioning directly under PETA's tweet about this article is this video. Can I kill a bird? Fucking PETA. And this just goes to show you that people are still clowning on PETA even in the modern age. PETA is mad at Far Cry 6 for having a cockfighting minigame. They urged Ubisoft to replace it with a minigame that doesn't glorify cruelty. This is just another example of PETA putting animals in front of people in video games. Games can glorify murder all they want, but as soon as it's about animals, PETA has to step in. They do the same thing with Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Assassinating people is fine, but as soon as you start glorifying whaling, then it's a problem. And just like with Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed tries to be historically accurate. It makes no sense to leave out whaling if the people who made the game want it in. Like, what's the real argument here? So, whaling is illegal in most of the world, frowned upon, and kills an innocent creature. Okay, that's fair, but if that's the reason you're taking it out of your video game, 
then you should probably exclude murder as well. And if you don't, you're either a hypocrite or have really, really messed up priorities. In the exact same vein of the whaling article, PETA attacks a game called The Red Lantern for having dog sledding in the game. This next article might be one of the biggest stretches that I have seen from PETA's perspective. So PETA wrote a public letter to Nintendo because they were angry about how the 1-2 Switch cow milking minigame was not realistic. Personally, I was upset that the Wizard minigame wasn't more accurate, but to each their own, I guess. Essentially, Nintendo isn't showing the evil side of milking cows. And they say that milking cows is never pleasant for the animals. Which is just a lie. Yeah, there is a lot of cruel farms out there that probably don't make it pleasant for the cows, I'm not denying that. But to say that a cow never enjoys being milked is just wrong. And at the end of the day, just look at this game. Are you saying you want Nintendo to just throw some real cow abuse in the middle of this otherwise goofy and lighthearted game? Actually, knowing PETA, that's probably exactly what they would do. Oh yeah, by the way, this letter is from the president of PETA themselves. You know the board game Operation where you try to get the small objects out of the patient without touching the sides? Well, PETA made a parody game of it called Operation Vivisection Edition, which is the same game but with a monkey. And it's supposed to highlight how terrible it is to test on monkeys. I believe this was only made for a video. I don't think any real versions of this exist anywhere. Honestly, this is kind of an interesting PSA. This video doesn't show you any like animal abuse or anything really messed up. It just shows you monkeys in cages and with all the editing that they do, it makes it look a little creepy, but that's about it. I'll show you a small chunk of it. That's a little unsettling, no doubt, and I could have gone this in a little more tasteful way, but I really don't think this one crosses any lines at all. Hunting Simulator 2 is exactly what it sounds like, and PETA hates this game for exactly the reason that you would think. Not much is said here, just that hunting isn't okay according to PETA, and that their recommendation would be to trade guns for cameras and essentially make it a Pokemon Snap kind of game. This next one is just kind of weird, again, I don't think that PETA's hating on the game, but it's just kind of like, why is this? even a thing. PETA reminds StarCraft players that Zerglings have feelings too. The point of this article is to respect all creatures no matter what. That's pretty much it, it's just really random. And it's really interesting to me that PETA really could have made this article about any monster in literally any game but just chose StarCraft for whatever reason. PETA roasted Sony for releasing this promotional ad of God of War featuring what looks like a real decapitated goat. Sony did censor the goat in the ad, but I'm gonna censor it even more because while I don't think it's anything too graphic, I suppose I can see people being grossed out by it and hopefully this won't make YouTube mad at me. And I will say that this is something that I agree with PETA on. I don't think the ad is that bad, but I will say it is unnecessary. But this article is just really weird coming from PETA. You know the guys who made a game that jump scares you with a dead seal carcass. Fun fact, apparently PETA was able to convince Ubisoft to remove a full page print ad featuring a chimpanzee from a Rolling Stone magazine. If anyone can find that, please send it my way. I'm very curious to what the ad looked like. And the article doesn't give any more information on it. Untitled Goose Game was praised by PETA winning some kind of award, I, I guess? Basically, PETA loves this game because the goose is in charge and is finally able to rebel. I didn't know that geese were that oppressed. But I mean, hey, this article is positive, so I can't be mad here. The Sims 3 was also praised by PETA. Apparently, it's the most animal-friendly game of 2009 because you can go vegan. That's it. Again, it's not negative, so I can't be mad. Okay, now let's go back to being mad at PETA real quick. When the former president of Nintendo, Satoru Iwata, died, they released this statement. It does start off fine. They say that they're saddened and talk about how they've made great games like Nintendogs, which is a game that PETA has praised in the past. But then the article says, Our love for these games powered the parodies we've made, such as Super Mario Bros. and Pokemon spoofs. Which which is total BS. Those games are not tasteful parodies at all. PETA makes all of the Nintendo characters look bad in them every chance they get. In the StarCraft article it says, People often wonder what PETA has against video games, especially after playing our Pokemon Black and Blue or Super Tanuki Skin 2D parody games. Later in that article it's because that everything's fueled by their love for video games. But here they acknowledge that people aren't receiving them positively so at this point they 
know what they're doing, and they never try to backtrack from these games at all. It then goes on to talk about how they make these games to raise awareness to themselves, and in other articles they admit to making these games just to capitalize off their popularity. Another example is them plugging their games again when Nintendo and McDonald's partnered up. PETA is using Satoru Iwata's death as publicity for their terrible, distasteful parodies so they can gain more attention. Fuck you, PETA! Let's now get off this heavy subject and look at the games that PETA promotes. These two games are Adult Swim games that are very similar to games that PETA would make. The first one is Tofu Hunter. Like I said, this game is an Adult Swim game, but it was also made by This Is Pop, which is the team that made the two PETA games, Breast Not Animal Tests, and Meat Is Murder The Game. Anyway, this game is stupid. I mean, <laughs> just look at this. I highkey don't even want to give you guys any context and just leave you with this. But don't worry, I'll dive into it all. I don't think you can still play this game online, but it is well documented. It's really just a parody of one of those deer hunting games, but now with tofu. You just shoot the tofu and other vegan foods in the wilds. You can choose from different objectives. You can change your weapons and upgrade them. And when you do well, the game decides to berate you. Visually, this game doesn't look very good, but by PETA standards, it's honestly fine. This game clearly has a lot more polish to it than most games made by PETA as well. And it does look like it plays okay. So I don't know, it looks like a legit enough game. And I'm sure I could have some fun with it if I played it with an open mind. This definitely would be one of the better PETA games if it was one. So what's the message of this game? I don't know. Since this is an Adult Swim game, it's hard to tell. The game gives you plenty of hints to go vegetarian, so it's really hard to tell if they want you to go vegetarian or if this is just a joke to them. Polar Bear Payback is a game where polar bears get payback. It's a beat-em-up. You play as a polar bear to kill seal clubbers. Compared to PETA's one beat-em-up, this game does look a bit better, but not by much. This game is still playable online, but guess what? I don't want to play it. I'm done playing games like this. I'm just so sick of it. So I'm just going to go off the one video that I found. And in it, the person only beats the first level. So I guess that's all I'm going to say about it. Either way, I just find it funny that other game studios are making similar games to PETA. I'm not sure why Adult Swim made these. If I had to guess, I would say they're just trying to be edgy and funny. And yeah, if I played these games as a kid, I would probably enjoy it. But I was a dumb kid back then. Real quick, while editing, I just found they also plugged a game called Beef Bash. It's not an Adult Swim game, but it's just as stupid as the rest of the PETA games. It has you killing animals the entire time, has dialogue that looks like it's straight out of a PETA game, and it's just <laughs> so bad. That's all I wanted to say there. Those are all of the video game articles by PETA that I found. I'm sure there's more out there, and if there is, definitely send them my way. And now make sure you're subscribed, because I am never going to stop making fun of PETA. Every single time, I think I only have like one or two more PETA videos left. I either find something new or come up with a new idea, so stay tuned for at least like another month of weekly PETA videos. That's all. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you all have a happy Tuesday.